Hello friends, welcome to Rajesh Data Engineering. In this video, I am going to explain one of the useful PySpark inbuilt function, which is SIP with. Working with array data type or map data type is always challenging in PySpark development. With the help of this SIP with, we can handle array data type efficiently. So I am going to show how to use this SIP with in PySpark development. So what is a SIP with? As I mentioned, SIP with is one of the built-in PySpark function which is used to combine elements of two arrays by performing element-wise operations. We can apply specific binary function to each pair of elements from those two arrays. What is binary function? Binary function is accepting two input parameters and providing one output parameter. So in this case, we are going to pass pair of element, one element from first array and another element from another array, then we are going to apply certain binary function. With the help of that, we can combine two uh, elements into single and we can produce new array as output. That is the use of sweep with. In case you don't understand, when I give a demo, you will understand. And this is part of PySpark.SQL.Functions library. And sweep with is the keyword we have to use. This is accepting three parameters, left side array element, or array column, array value, and right side array value and binary function, which we have to apply. This is very straightforward. So let's get started with the demo. I have logged into my Databricks environment. My cluster is up and running and I have created a sample notebook for this demo. And first step is I'm going to create sample data frame, which we can understand. This sample data frame I'm executing. This sample data frame is containing three columns, ID, array one, array 2. This is one of the simple data set I have created for this demo. So array 1, array uh, 2, these are array data type which is having three elements for each uh, value, each array. Right. So now my requirement is I have to perform element wise operations like for first array 1 which is uh, you know corresponding to this number 4 in the second array and 2 that is corresponding to 5, 3 which is corresponding to 6. So we need to perform certain element wise operations. Let's say I have to multiply you no know, element wise 1 multiplied by 4 it should be 4 2 multiplied by 5 it will be 10 3 multiplied by 6 it will be 18. So I want to produce new array by applying element wise operations. So let me show you how to use zip with in the next cell. So in the next cell this is our uh, sample data frame we created uh, in the previous step with the help of with column. I'm going to create a new column which is called shift. So I have to use the function sip with that is a keyword. This is accepting three parameters. So array one that is my first column array two this is another column and I have to specify function. So in this case I have defined that function in one of the previous line. So this is inline lambda function. So lambda function is inline function which is accepting input parameters and it is applying certain logic on uh, the logic that we are defining right here lambda function which is accepting two elements and it is performing addition so my requirement is i want to add two elements right this is the syntax this is how we can apply even i can put this logic directly in this place but for better modularity better readability i have segregated this right now let me execute then we can see how it uh, produces output here we can see this is our original data frame. Now we have added a new calculated column with this, which is shift and here we can see element wise operations. We have performed addition. So 1 plus 4 which is 5. 2 plus uh, 5 which is resulted to 7. So this is how we can perform element wise operations while working in array data type in PySpark. I hope you understood. I want to show different um, scenarios that uh, we come across while working in real time project. So one scenario could be we might see the data which is having inconsistent number of elements across different rows. So in order to understand that scenario that real time scenario let me execute this uh, cell so it is going to create a sample data frame then we can see. So here first row which is having three elements one two three and uh, second um, uh, array column which is having three elements four five six but if you look at the second record which is having only two elements 
on both the sides left side and right side and coming to the third record which is having four elements on the right side and also left side so here you, you can see you now the number of elements which is inconsistent across different rows and this if with the function will be supported for these kind of scenarios or not just i want to show you for that again i'm going to use the same binary function and uh, same logic but only thing is our input data is different so let me execute then we can see this is supported or not i have executed and what happens here we can see it has performed element wise operations and it is not throwing any error and also it is giving the expected output here only we are having two elements and it has perfectly applied 7 plus 10 which is 17 8 plus 11 which is 19 so there is no issue these kind of real time uh, scenarios are supported by cpet very well right i want to show you one more uh, scenario as well so in this scenario we, we are going to have inconsistent number of elements in the same row then we are going to see what will happen with cpet so here i am executing so the sample data is created here on top of the previous uh, data frame that we created i am just adding the fourth record which is having two elements on the left side and four elements on the right side so what will happen if i am going to apply ship with to add to perform addition of these elements because we don't have third and fourth elements here and here we are having third and fourth element so what will happen while we are performing some uh, binary function here All right so let's see let me execute then we can try to understand the output of this scenario it's getting executed now we can see the output so this is our input and here we can see output column shipped and first three uh, records we have already seen the output in the previous example now coming to the fourth one here we clearly we can see it is producing null values so here third element and fourth element we don't have so it is treated as null so whatever the operations we are going to perform with null value it will uh, result to null so as a result first two elements it got applied successfully we can see the output but for the third and fourth element it is producing null value so that is going to be the going to be the behavior of uh, ship with in case we are going to have inconsistent number of elements but in most of the practical scenarios we don't want to see null value here instead of that we want to treat third and fourth element as zero and we want to see the output of 6 and 15 here because 6 plus 0 that should be 6 here and 15 plus 0 that should be 15 here so how we can achieve that for that i have created a simple workaround even you can use that for your projects so for that workaround what i am doing is i am simply creating one function user defined function in that function i am going to pass all the array values as input parameter array 1 and array 2 so first i am going to uh, calculate the maximum length between these two arrays so in our case array 2 which is having 4 array 1 that is having two elements so the maximum of 2 comma 4 that will be 4 so maximum length should be 4 for all, all the uh, array values right then what i am doing is for each and every array for example array 1 i am going to find the difference between the maximum length and that corresponding length so maximum length is 4 and array 1 length is 2 so 4 minus 2 it's going to be 2 then i am going to multiply 0 0 will be multiplied two times with our original so it means it's going to add 2 0 at the end of that array similarly for the next array again we are going to calculate maximum length which is 4 and a length which is uh, already 4 for a second uh, array so 4 minus 4 it will be 0 0 multiplied by 0 it's going to be 0 then the original value will be retained as a next value then uh, this user different function will be returning those two values back to the data frame right now let me execute then we can see what's happening so here basically i'm creating a new calculated column which is going to combine these two so both value will be combined into single uh, array value so let me execute then you can see the output it's getting executed now here we, you can see both the elements first element and second element both got uh, packed into one array value and coming to this uh, last one here we are having zero in the place of missing elements because the maximum would be four but we are having only two elements here so i am adding two dummy values which is zero now we can safely apply um, 
sieve width but before that we have to split that into two different columns same like array 1 array 2 so in the next logic i am going to use array index so index is 0 which is going to take only the first value out of this and uh, index 1 that is going to take the second value out of this uh, this input so let me execute then you can see the output how we are splitting this uh, column into two different separate columns here now we can see so this is the original column now we have uh, calculated new column which is adding 0 the value 0 in the place of missing so basically it is comparing both the uh, uh, arrays and in case one of the element one of the array that is having less number of elements then it will be padded with 0 I hope you understood now we can safely apply our zip with function now it's the same uh, syntax I am defining the function then I am um, calling zip with by passing three parameters now I am going to pass the new calculated um, array columns then we can see the output let me execute then we can see the output here we can see instead of producing null value in our output earlier it was producing null value but instead of null value now it is producing 6 3 6 plus 3 which is 9 12 plus 9 which is 21 and now uh, instead of null we are having 0 0 plus 6 it is producing 6 and 0 plus 15 it is producing 15 right this is the workaround in case you are having uh, different number of elements in same row in your real time scenario i hope you understood uh, this concept I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like the content of this video, please like and comment in the channel. And also don't forget to subscribe this channel. Also click on the bell button to get the latest video on the Databricks development. Thank you.